there's no getting around it. I have helmet hair and this is a weird one. This is Out Motorsports, the channel for cars as you are. My name is Jake and I'm here with a Polaris Slingshot Roush Edition. This is not necessarily something we would kind of ask for and focus on on a channel like this, but we're doing more with motorcycles with Tyler. And uh, our friends over at Polaris reached out and said, hey, we've got a slingshot in the area. Would you like to drive it? And it's this kind of funky odd mix of being a car and a motorcycle. And I said, hey, why not? I've never been in one of these and I've seen them, so let's see what it is. So this is the Slingshot Roush Edition. Let's talk all about what it is. And of course, we'll get behind the steering wheel because yes, it has one of those. And we'll talk all about how it is to drive. All right, so what is the Polaris Slingshot? Well, the Slingshot is a three-wheeled car, trike, motorcycle thing. So you have two wheels up here at the front that are just kind of regular looking, you know, car sort of wheels. It's fairly wide, a uh, fairly wide track here. And then you've got one wheel going on at the back. You've probably seen these if you live near a big city uh, being driven very appropriately through the city uh, and maybe parked and usually people kind of drive slow and you know blast music and, and just kind of have fun with them uh, and I'm here to actually drive drive so we want to talk about what this thing is so you've got this giant back wheel going on here this is a 305 millimeter rear tire this is a gigantic tire because as you can see there's only one wheel here and this is where the power flows so this is uh, being driven by a belt you look right here it's belt drive so how cool is that uh, power comes from a two liter four cylinder engine that is mounted up front i don't really know how to pop the hood on this so i'm not going to but there's an engine up here it's a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that polaris makes uh, they used to use a general motors ecotech that you would have found in the chevy cruise and the chevy cobalt but uh, now they use their own uh, two liter naturally aspirated four and in this case, it makes 203 horsepower and 144 pound-feet of torque. Now, the fun thing, if we pop over to the tachometer, uh, this is a screamer of an engine. So you can see there, maybe, sort of, uh, the tack goes to 10,000 RPM. You can't rev it that high. You can rev it to 8,500, but the peak power is made at 8,250, so you really, really have to rev it. Now, a lot of these slingshots come with a two-pedal automatic-ish, automated manual, whatever transmission, but this one has a manual. So this is a five-speed manual transmission that was actually shared with the Pontiac Solstice and Saturn Sky, among some other stuff. It's an Eisen five-speed manual transmission. It was shared actually with the uh, Saturn Sky and Pontiac Solstice, so kind of a fun fact there, among some other stuff. Now, the interesting thing about this is the curb weight on this thing, as you might expect, is pretty light. This only weighs 1,680 pounds. However, the wheelbase uh, between the front and back wheels is roughly 10 inches longer than that of a Mazda Miata. So that is kind of an interesting, fun fact. Now, picking the Roush Edition in particular gives you that wider back tire. It gives you this excursion top. A lot of these are open topped, so you get this top if it's sunny out, which it is today because it's summertime. Uh, and then up front here, you get some four piston Brembo brake calipers with uh, slotted rotors. Now, I'm not a fan of slotted rotors on anything, but if nothing else, it's nice to have some big Brembo brakes on the front of this because you can get going pretty quickly. Power to weight on this thing is roughly the same as a brand new Toyota Supra. Uh, and then otherwise, Roush Edition gives you some style tweaks. So you get kind of the two-tone red and white paint. You can see you've got these red accented seats going on in here and a few other things here and there. Now, of course, no one watching this channel has probably seen a slingshot up close and personal. So let's take a little closer look at what else is going on here. Steering wheel wise, this is a two spoke wheel. You've got audio controls right here. You can pair your phone via Bluetooth. And then this actually, it has cruise control. Uh, and then this will control kind of the center of your gauge cluster right there. It's a pretty basic screen. I'll show you once I start it up. Uh, music wise, of course, it's important to talk about that because you see these blasting music a lot. Uh, you've got a Rockford Fosgate sound system. So there's a couple tweeters up there and then you've got kind of what would be a door speaker on either side by your, your foot basically. And that is paired to this little infotainment system. Again, I'll show it to you in a second when it's on. It is Polaris's own thing. It does have Apple CarPlay, but there's a quirk to it. So we'll show you that again in a second. Now this does have keyless starts. It's a push button start. You've got toggle switches here for your traction control, your hazards, and then kind of like ambient lighting at night. Now this is the key. This is its keyless start. Uh, it does have a remote fob here. So this actually has a security system. If you hit lock and walk away, if someone tries to start this without the fob in the car, it will set an alarm. And then this key is for the glove box right there. And if we look at this glove box, 
It's not huge. Uh, I don't know what all you could fit in here, but there is, you know, some storage. I've fit the car cover that they gave me in it as well. Uh, you do have a USB port here and a 12 volt socket for charging something or running, I don't know, a radar detector or a dash cam or something. And everything is fairly watertight and, and weather tight because obviously there's no, no doors, kind of half of a windshield going on. So that's that. Uh, back here, you've got a couple more plugs, another USB, another 12 volt, and then you've got this little armrest. Um, everything is fine. It's kind of what you expect materials wise out of something that's meant to be waterproof-ish. Uh, and then you've got another USB port here, and this is the one you use if you want to use Apple CarPlay. This is not a wireless charger, it's just a place to set your phone, and then of course you've got two cup holders back here. Now before I start this, one fun little quirk, if you look over at the turn signal stock, if you've ever driven an old like 90s Volvo, this might look familiar to you. It's very, very similar in its shape, and I think they might be using an old Volvo turn signal sock, so that's kind of fun. And then mirror-wise, these are manually adjustable. You can just push and pull and get them wherever you want them. There is no rear view mirror, so you just have to use the two side views. Now if I go ahead and put my foot on the clutch and the brake and hit this... It is, of course, nice and loud. There's not much of an exhaust going on here, uh, but you do have this as your infotainment system, and you can pair to USB or Bluetooth. I'll go ahead and hit Bluetooth to get my phone up, and I can play music just like this. I can also try to play on Apple CarPlay. However, if I hook up my phone, you can see here it says a Bluetooth headset must be connected to use Apple CarPlay, which means uh, you have to have something for the sake of uh, playing music in your ears and you can't play the music over the speakers. It's kind of a weird omission, but whatever. Uh, there is built-in navigation here. It is slow, it is kind of fine, it has worked sort of, and I otherwise, I don't know, it's, it's okay enough. Um, everything is more functional and utilitarian. This is not great. I would rather use CarPlay, but I don't have a Bluetooth headset uh, with me and I really don't want to have something in my ears blocking the sound. Uh, there's also this view here of like a rider screen, if I close that. Uh, you can customize what you see here, what you see here. Um, pretty easy, kind of nice to, to look at and use. And if we look over here, I don't know how well you can see this going on, but uh, you've got a screen in the middle here. Um, obviously your speedometer is here, but you've got trip. You can, you can mess with what it shows you uh, in the, let's see the odometer, your speed, your RPM, whatever. Um, you know, some of this you can also have on the center screen, but I've just been leaving it on the trip odometer, uh, which is where, there. So anyway, that is the Polaris slingshot. You'll notice I have helmet hair. It's a billion degrees out, but uh, Polaris does want me wearing a full face helmet when I'm driving this because this is, according to them, classified as a motorcycle. Now, depending on what state you live in, uh, that may or may not be the case. So, for example, I'm currently in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia calls this an auto trike, uh, and they don't require you to wear a helmet, but I'm still gonna wear one because A, Polaris said so, and B, uh, I have a some semblance of a roll cage around me that I think is more meant to support the top than actually any sort of rollover. So, uh, we're just gonna take this for a little cruise up and down the George Washington Parkway. There's not a lot of traffic here, which is what I'm a fan of. Um, I'm not a motorcycle person. I know how to ride them, but I don't ride them because uh, around the DC area, I think it's a little bit of a death wish. So uh, we're just gonna take a nice little cruise without a lot of traffic around, talk about how this thing is to drive. So as we're making our way out of the park here, uh, this is you know not meant to be a slow speed cruiser 100% of the time. Um, going you know 10 to 20 miles an hour is not really what this whole thing is all about. So this is more meant for back roads and you know enjoyable spirited-ish drives. This is not a car you could live with as your only car, uh, unless you're nuts. Uh, it's not practical at all. The only storage you have is in that little glove box or on the floor of the passenger seat. And uh, obviously it's open air, so if it's 100 degrees and you're in traffic, uh, it's going to be totally miserable because you have no moving air. There's no HVAC system, obviously. Uh, this one does not have heated or ventilated seats, although I do think that's an option on some of them. Now the interesting thing getting out of the park, uh, there's a couple potholes here. <laughs> you can't just straddle a pothole like you would in a car 
because you have your front two wheels that are, you know, outboard, and then the back wheel is in the middle. So you have to be very careful with potholes. You're going to send one of the three wheels into them. So just another fun little quirk. Now, like I said, this makes full power, all 203, at 8250. Uh, and you can... We'll, we'll do it here in a second. Uh, it will light up the back tire if you really try. Um, even with the traction control, it's, it'll do it. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carefully, quickly accelerate here, but uh, I, I'm still not super comfortable just like pinning it wide open. So in any case, we'll do see what we can do here. Put this down. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm sure you all could hear that was a little bit of tire spin all the way through first gear. I had the traction control light come on there and it kind of quelled things a bit. This is plenty fast, like I said. It's about as fast power to weight wise as a new Toyota Supra with the six cylinder. So uh, plenty quick. Um, it's easy enough to to drive otherwise. Ooh, I've got a fellow trike rider. Hello. Not a Polaris, though. Um, once you're on the move, this is just like driving a car. It's it's really interesting. You've just got a lot of uh, wind going on around you, um, a lot of open air. Obviously, there's nothing here, which is kind of strange at first. Um, on a nice day, today's fairly nice, not super humid. This is pretty nice, actually. Um, it gets a little droney at like 2,500 RPM, you know, in fifth gear. Transmission-wise, like I said, this is an Eisen 5-speed. It was in the Solstice, the Sky, uh, the Chevy Colorado pickup truck a long time ago. Um, it is a fine five-speed. It's not a great five-speed. It's very notchy, um, generally in a good way, although if you rush the two to three upshift, it will just not let you into third. Um, that's kind of unpleasant. The clutch, though, is fairly easy to deal with. It's not really heavy. It's not too light. It's nicely weighted. Um, there's no weird like clutch delay valve feeling or anything, uh, so that is, you know, pretty easy to handle. Ride quality of this is about what you'd expect for something like this. It's um, generally okay. Uh, it's stiff, but you don't. This isn't a luxury car. This isn't supposed to ride that well. Uh, it's more meant for cornering, and it's you know, it's it's, it's stiff and firm, but not in a like break your back kind of way. Um, the nice thing about the whole the ride is it's pretty composed, and even you know if you get the back out a little bit, it's possible to do. And if you do, um, it's actually pretty easy to keep under control and manage because like i said that wheelbase is super long it's like 104 inches which is a long wheelbase for a car or a, a trike or whatever that this is that's long that's uh, a, a new miata is like 94 95 inches so that's the difference in what you're working with now steering of course uh feels pretty direct um i don't believe it's power assisted but you don't really need it because this thing weighs you know just over 1500 pounds without me in it so that is totally fine pretty good steering pretty quick pretty direct uh and then the brakes when you go for them it does have anti-lock brakes and i haven't really needed to get into that uh but you've got like i said those giant front brake uh rotors and the big four piston calipers and it you know it stops just fine even if you you know get into it pretty hard it'll it'll stop pretty straight and pretty easily and you can feel the the abs start to pulse just a touch uh but it it generally does a fine job so overall, I mean, the, the overall driving experience of this is pretty normal. It's just kind of, it's like driving a motorcycle that drives like a car. Um, it's a very odd sensation as someone who doesn't ride motorcycles. Like I can, I've ridden them in parking lots and otherwise I don't ride them. So um, it's a very odd, interesting sensation. <laughs> as far as other stuff and like you see people kind of driving around and, you know, in cities blasting music and kind of acting silly. Um, I understand why now. It's it's funny. Uh, this it, the sound system is not good. Um, it's it's what you'd expect for a couple Rockford Fosgate speakers tucked into an open air vehicle um, where you're just driving around with it basically at full blast all the time. Uh, but. And the whole thing is just so joyous and ridiculous that you can't help but blast music in it. Now, obviously, uh, I am probably not the the target buyer for this a lot of the time. Um, 
and I have taken great pleasure in blasting Kylie and Whitney and Madonna and uh, Laura Branigan and all that uh, because it's just so, so damn dumb. And I just enjoy that so much. Let's get one more rev here. The other interesting thing, the exhaust is obviously very, very loud. Uh, it kind of doesn't really have one from what I can tell. Um, it smells, it smells like it doesn't have cats. I'm sure, you know, obviously it meets whatever emissions laws it has to, but um, it's very much more like a motorcycle in that way. It's loud, it's pretty raw, uh, It's it adds to the experience. And this whole thing is an open air experience the whole time you're driving it. It is uh, more stressful than driving, let's say, a Mazda Miata. Um, it is a, it is a whole body activity to drive this thing. You are constantly surrounded by stimuli and, and there's just a lot going on. It's not a bad thing, but it's a different thing. I had several people ask, why would I buy this over a Miata? And my answer is if the Miata is too practical, too insulated, too uh, you know removed from the world for you, but you don't want a motorcycle because of reasons, this is what you buy. Uh, <laughs> It's a it's an interesting vehicle. It's very silly. Um, you know, there's no practicality points to be had here, nor are they claiming there are. So, uh, very interesting. I, I am fortunate in that Polaris let me take one of these out for a little bit. Um, we are not going to become out slingshot sports because I don't think this really fits what a lot of our buyers are looking to do. But uh, to that end, it is indeed quite fun uh, in kind of a limited way for me. I think this is a fun like toy to have, but it's not something that I really get uh, that much more jazzed about other than like, oh, let's take it out for 20, 30 miles at a time. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's a little too compromised, I think, for my taste. But um, I get the appeal. It's very silly. It's very fun. Uh, having this top is really nice on the Roush Edition versus uh, one of the other slingshots that doesn't have one of those because then this is all open and exposed to the sun, and I would be cooking right now. This is actually pretty comfortable. I've just got a breeze going, so it's really not that bad. I'm just a little hot in the helmet, of course. But uh, generally, that's it so uh, fun overall enjoyable overall um, it's just for only a small niche sort of buyer but that's okay you know not everything has to be for every person um, I think some people are gonna love this and a lot of people are not gonna love it and that is entirely okay I honestly wish we had more vehicles that were a little more controversial versus everything being everything to everybody. All right, that's it for this review of the 2023 Polaris Slingshot Roush Edition. Thank you so much for coming along on this wacky, wild, weird review. So fun to have you here for this. Please be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe right here on YouTube. Give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Outmotorsports. Until next time, please stay safe, be well. See you again soon.